on this episode of RAH War Series, Australia's First Battle in the Great War. I am Riz and welcome to the RAH War Series. Last month, the Australian military was preparing for war, hastily raising an expedition force to take the German colonies in the Pacific. And that invasion comes this month. In the Pacific, Germany had colonies in the northern part of New Guinea called Kaiser Wilhelm Land. You may think this is stupid, then again there are a lot of islands named after monarchs. Go figure. Anyway, the German Empire also controlled a number of islands in the Pacific such as <coughs> The Solomon Islands, the Marshall Islands, the Marina Islands, the Caroline Islands, Bougainville, Nauru Island, and Samoa. Fun fact! Most of these islands were once owned by the Spanish Empire until they sold it to the German Empire. I say most, since the German Empire didn't get Guam because the United States had control of that island due to the Spanish-American War, which was the reason why the Spanish Empire had to sell their remaining colonies to the German Empire. And yes, this war was happening during the events of Red Dead Redemption 2. I just wanted to mention that. So, Australia was ordered by the British to seize and occupy the islands from German control within six months. Days prior, the Navy did reconnaissance in the area whilst capturing a few German ships. The plan was to capture the wireless station in Peter Parker, then a full landing invasion. The Germans knew a force was coming and kinda went like this. Okay men, we need to be ready to smack those hack jolly snag eating British lapdogs until our navy comes. Uh, sir, we only have a battalion of reserve Germans and about 240 native policemen. Also, our wireless station in Nauru was captured two days ago, so I don't think the navy's coming. Oh, and um, the Australians have already landed. Scheiße! Indeed. On the 11th of September, 500 Australians crashed land on Peter Parker. The Battle of Peter Parker has begun. Why are you here, USA? Wait, why are you here? Anyway, the battle only lasted a day. There were casualties on both sides, and Australian forces captured the wireless station as well as prisoners, though some prisoners did die from bayonet injuries. The rest of the German forces retreated to the town of Toma, but they didn't know 200 advanced Australians were following them and surrounded the town. On the 14th of September came the siege of Toma. After a few warning shots from a 12-pound cannon, the governor of Toma knew he could only stall time. Terms of surrender were signed on the 17th and on the 21st, most of the remaining troops and natives surrendered. Uh, with the exception of only 20 natives and this German guy fled deep into New Guinea, remaining uncaptured until the end of the war. The rest of the campaign more or less was island hopping to the rest of the islands, which were taken with little, if not no resistance making this campaign one of the least bloodiest battles of the entire war. In short, Australia's first victory in the Great War was a hard but easy victory. So why is this not remembered? Well, seven months later, a bigger campaign will define both Australia and New Zealand, overshadowing this entire campaign. And finally, back home, Andrew Fisher of the Labour Party has won the 1914 Australian election. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. Please like and subscribe. It brings a smile to my face and have a nice day. Fighting, still, who's paid? Crew by Anthony Rizzo, Sydney, Australia.